Hi, welcome back to the Wellness Wave video. Um, we need to continue our conversation about thyroid because we're chatting after the last video and we, there's, we put a lot into it. We need to unpack that a little bit more, mm -hmm. get more in depth. Um, remember in the last video, we were encouraging you to make sure to ask your doctors mm -hmm. um, more and more questions. And do about, the right tests. And to do the right tests mm -hmm. and uh, you know about, okay, if I'm taking medication, why am I taking this? Is there anything else that we need to be testing? What else affects that type of thing? So mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick's gonna go into more uh, with the relationship between your brain, your pituitary gland, the thyroid, Correct. the nerves and all that. So run with it. Okay, good. Uh, if mm -hmm. you remember, the one thing I really want to point out is remember when you actually have a test, have them test your TSH levels, your T4 levels, your T3 levels, your free T levels, your free T4 levels, mm -hmm. and your reverse T levels. Now, what that does, it gives you a full picture. It can tell if the adrenals are affecting it. But another part that we also forget about is the fact that autoimmune disorders are on the rise. So what can happen is one very major test that we should always have tested is our thyroid antibodies. For example, I have a five-year-old girl sitting in front of me as far as the, the file is sitting in front yeah. of me, where the, the little daughter was actually already starting to lose hair. Well, how can actually a five-year-old girl, she was probably maybe 40 pounds, um, so she didn't have any weight problems affecting it, how could she have a thyroid problem? Right. Okay, well what ended up happening is her immune system started to affect her thyroid and start breaking it down. And so if we look at even the values, what they had for the TSH, where the brain tells the thyroid how to work, um, the value should be between 0.4 and 4.7. Hers were at 569. Oh. So the brain was saying, the brain, remember, pituitary telling the thyroid, please produce hormone, Make produce hormone. hormone. Yeah. Now, of course, her thyroxin, um, the lowest you want to be is 0.7. She was at 0.14. Which is okay? your T4. Which is T4. Yep. Okay. Now, that's all they really tested. And I'm like, listen, no, you have to go farther than that because there's no way a little girl can have a thyroid problem like that. And what they did is they tested her thyroid antibodies. Because guess what? They were giving this little girl levothyroxine, which has oh. never been tested on children, but they didn't know what else to do. And they told her right out, said, you will be on this the rest of your life which I do hate that statement, okay? Mm -hmm. So they test her thyroid antibodies. It should be less than 20 of a value. Mm -hmm. She was at 3,549. So what does something like that do? If she's pumping that much, if her, if her thyroid's producing that much, mm -hmm. what is that gonna affect? How is it gonna affect her body? Well, what it's gonna do, it's gonna put massive strain on pituitary and that's gonna start shutting down. But what it also shows is that the immune system is actually starting to degenerate the thyroid at five years old. So it's eating it. It's basically, it's self-cannibalism. It really oh is, it's gosh. destroying the process. So I want you to think about what can we do to help rebuild that process? Well, if you really think about it is actually, if you look at T3 and T4, what that stands for, it's basically a tyrosine molecule with four or three iodines attached together. So if we can really start to hone on some of those foods that feed that iodine. Mm -hmm. Very simply, there's a really simple diagnostic test that you can look up. We do it on every person that walks through this door, regardless if they are listed as a thyroid disorder or not is we'll put what's called iodine patch test on their arm. Yeah. It's where you'll take some whole food based iodine, you'll put it on their arm, and you should monitor it for 24 hours. Okay, and what that'll do very simply, if there is a need for it, your body will absorb it very quickly. If mm -hmm. it's not, it will stay on there for a period of time. So what happens is this, so if we can actually ingest some iodine based foods, it will give our body at least the ability to uh, um, use and produce that hormone. The great thing about it is this, Midwest has more, and since we're in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Midwest has more thyroid problems than what? South, east, or west because we don't eat enough, you know, basically sea vegetables. So let's look at some of the things that we can eat that would be very beneficial for our, our thyroid. Obviously kelp, it's a sea vegetable. Um, you can throw it on your salad. It's, it has a very sharp taste, so you don't eat, run, eat it kind of alone. Uh, another great thing is yogurt, uh -huh. okay? Yogurt is, is a phenomenal iodine-based food that way. Another thing is actually raw cow's milk, okay? Not processed cow's milk, not processed yogurt. Right. Excuse me, what happens is you wanna have some great organic or non-pasteurized based uh, um, um, dairy in that yep, way. Yep. Second of all, a whole egg. You know, we've gotten this myth about eggs being so bad for us and they're actually one of the most essential foods for us, okay? Um, strawberries, a very high iodine-based fruit, okay? Uh, one more, now more on the lower end, but still has a good uh, base of iodine is actually what? Mozzarella cheese. All okay? right, pizza. Yeah, pizza. There's some great <laughs> things you can do there. Uh, with so, meat. Yes, with good meat. <laughs> At least to get some good stuff in yeah, there. Not soy. Okay, okay, not soy. Yeah, no, no soy hamburger on that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so when we look at it, let's kind of look at the aspect of, we have to really look at thyroids a, as a whole and how it affects the body. It just does not affect, just like I said, our metabolism. It just does not affect our mood. It affects how we metabolize sugars. 
It affects how our, how, how our energy levels, which is a really big thing. If, if there's one thing that hits us the most is actually fatigue, but it's also a contributor to the female hormones, which we've had done several videos on right. messing with female hormones. You mess with physical and psychological things. Yeah, infertility, even all that. Kind everything, of everything. Er, everything. Actually, we, uh, even yesterday, um, I had a patient from Georgia that called me uh, infertility. Um, I was a therapist from uh, Georgia. Actually, she works with my sister. And my sister oh. is actually a massage therapist. Um, and what happens, uh, she was de dealing with her. Now, here's a woman that actually ate pretty well. I actually was going through her diet. I'm like, listen, your really diet don't have to change much. But she just had lack of hormones. She was 29 years old, okay? Oh my goodness. Yep, yep. So when we look at it, we really got to look at, let's review it once again, because it said it's very important for you guys to get this. Yep. When you look at the thyroid, <laughs> The, the, you look at TSH levels, okay? Then you look at T4 levels, then T3 levels, mm -hmm. and then free T3, mm -hmm. free T4, mm -hmm. reverse T3, and thyroid antibodies. That will give you a great picture of the function of the thyroid. But like we talked about, that also can tell us, is the effect of that thyroid coming from a different organ? Mm -hmm. Is it coming from that we don't have enough iodine? Is it coming from that our adrenals are stressed to the max? Is it telling us that our lifestyle is actually affecting it? Mm -hmm. are we, do we have too much mental stress? Do we have too much physical stress? You know, and that's where we gotta really look at the thyroid. That's the one thing about investigating it. And if we do find out that the antibodies hide, we have to reverse that immune system. Right. If we do find out that uh, you, you're deficient in iodine, we gotta start building it up. If we do find out that stress is very high, we gotta change the adrenals. See, instead of just going into the doctor and looking and saying, listen, uh, all these symptoms of thyroid, they test you, your values are low, give you a drug. Right. That's not an investigation. True investigation is finding what the root cause is and starting to rebuild that back to normal. When a doctor tells you and say, listen, you have to be on this the rest of your life, do not accept that. Do not accept that answer. Right, and what an encouraging thing to realize that we can actually reverse things in our bodies and not have to rely on medications to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not something that I've known for my whole life. Mm -hmm. So just understanding all of this stuff is really, it kind of frees you up. You mm -hmm. know, it frees you up from lots of the fears and the doubts and the worries that they throw out there, you know, with like the television commercials telling you to take this drug for that problem mm -hmm. and this drug for that problem. And, and it's just, I know I've been in that be before and sometime I'll get into it again, but it's very irritating to feel like you have to rely on certain medications and how are you going to pay for the medications? Mm -hmm. well, what's all that going to do? It's going to dump more stress back in your body and That's guess right. what? It's going to kill your adrenal gland again. You know, it you're is. just going to have overload. You're going to blow these things out and you're going to be in, in too much trouble. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we, I mm -hmm. want to uh, actually say too is November 14th, coming up here in just a couple weeks here, what we're doing, we're also doing up in the other office, up in Lakewood, Wisconsin, we're actually having a whole uh, base nutrition class that way. Mm -hmm. We already have actually a lot of people already signed up up there at the yeah. other office. And what I do is I want to encourage you the fact that if you live in the area, or if you would like a copy of that CD, email us, okay? Because we really like to go through, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover everything from, you know, what foods to support your body. I'm very big on foods. Yes, you may need some things, some supplementation, some glandulars, different things to help rebuild that system, right. but I'm so key on foods that, listen, foods are the key to everything. Yep. They're very the key to everything, because yep. if you can learn to support <clears throat> your body, what it needs, guess what? Supplementation is really, in the future not needed. Yeah, because God didn't put Adam in the uh, garden along with the pharmacy. Right. He put him in the garden with plants and trees right. and fruits and said, you will eat of the ground and you will eat the animals. And, and the pharmacy will be completed inside you. And yeah, absolutely. Yep. absolutely. That's good. We have a great you know, you ought to write a book on that. Uh, I don't know how to type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, until next time, uh, for Dr. Patrick Flynn, I'm Jason Steger, and uh, we're just praying for you. God bless you.